Yo guys, I'm Nick from the Produce School and welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make music like Hilo. Hilo is the techno alias of Oliver Heldens, who you probably all know already. He decided to start this project so that he could also release techno and we are a huge fan of his sound. In this video, I'm going to go over a build up and a drop in the style of Hilo. If you're searching for some techno sounds, go to the link in our description. We just released a techno pack called Inferno, which includes everything that you need for your next techno banger. From project files to a sample pack and serum presets, everything is there. So if you're interested, make sure to go to the link in the description. Without further ado, let's dive straight into the video and show you how it's done. So first I will play the project that I will walk through in this video, just so you can get an idea of the sound that we're covering today. So as you can hear, it's a really cool modern techno sound driven by a really fat Reese bass. And I will now go over all the elements in this track and show you how we made it. First of all, I want to start with the main element of this track, and that's the bass line. And it basically consists out of two basses, which together form a really fat Reese bass, which sounds like this. I'm going to turn off the FX and go over every bass so you get an idea how we created it in Serum. The first bass is from our pack Inferno and it's called Bass Kronos and it's heavily inspired by Hilo. And I will now show you guys how the sound is made. Oscillator A and Oscillator B both have a basic shape saw wave as the wavetable and we pitch it down to octaves. Also as you can see we tweaked some of the fine tune to make it a bit more analog and a bit more uh, yeah, detuned basically. Um, they both have one voice of unison so you don't really have to change anything for that. We did pan oscillator A to the left and oscillator B to the right. In that way you create a really wide Reese bass as you can also hear in Hilo's tracks. Then we have an MG Low 12 filter um, which is linked to envelope 2 which is a really long envelope which is slowly coming down so you will also hear that in the sound when I press it. The filter will slowly close um, when you hold the note for a longer time. And then we also have a sub oscillator just to make sure that we have some mono bass response as well um, because that's really important. Also on the filter we added some drive we really want to push the sound um, to the limit, I'd say, because we want it to sound so big and so fat. So that's why we put the drive up already a little bit right here. Then there is this LFO, which is pretty slow, linked to the MG Low 12, just a tiny bit, um, but it just adds a bit more movement to the bass. If you listen carefully, you can hear it. Um, maybe you don't, but it does make a little difference. Then the processing in Serum, which is really, really important for this bass, because if I turn it off, it sounds like this. And if I turn it on, it sounds like this. So first off we have a sign fold distortion um, with envelope 2 linked to the drive and mix level. And we also added a pre-distortion filter um, which is kind of a bandpass uh, in the lower area. Um, if I turn that off, you immediately hear that this um, kind of gets rid of some of that high annoying frequencies. Um, if you don't do that and add a multiband compressor afterwards, you will get really sharp uh, frequencies, which you don't necessarily want in a bass like this. So that being said, we also added a multiband compressor and boosted the gain a little bit. I think this is really something that shapes the sound. I'm almost 99% certain that they put an effect like this on the bass, whether it was an analog synth or whether it was made in some kind of uh, VST. Um, when you listen to the sound 
especially on lower notes. Um, it really makes a huge difference. So then there is this EQ, just boosting some of the low end to, yeah, to make it a bit more prominent. Then there is this MG Low 12 filter with envelope 2 linked to it, just to get rid of some of the harsh frequencies um, that are still there because of the compressor and maybe some of the distortion. Then there is a chorus, which sounds really cool as well. <laughs> doesn't make that big of a difference, but it does add something to the sound. For the post-processing, I simply added a Camel Crusher, a Reverb and a Sidechain. Make sure that you add a low cut to the Reverb, because you don't really want Reverb on the sub-responses of the sound, um, that would sound a little bit muddy. As always, the British Clean is just a really cool preset. If you just want to add a subtle boost to your sound, it adds some compression and some distortion. Um, which sounds really good. And then there is a sidechain on 86%. Um, nothing too crazy for the post-processing as the processing in the serum itself already makes the difference. Then there is the second Reese bass, which sounds pretty similar, but it's still a bit different. It's also made out of two saw waves with a tweak on the fine tune as well. Um, envelope 1 is shaped like this, which means that the filter where this envelope is linked to um, is closing faster than the sound I showed you before. It's slightly panned to the left and the right, but not as much as the first bass. Then for the processing, there is some hyper to make the sound wider, some diode 1 distortion. Um, it works really well if you want to really squash a sound a bit more. If you turn it up too much, you will even destroy the sound. Uh, for example, like this. Then you will like completely destroy the sound. But in some cases, um, you might want to do that. But for this case, it will definitely not sound good. Then there's a reverb and an EQ, which is boosting some of the high end. This bass is functioning as a top bass to add some grittiness to the higher uh, frequency areas of the bass. Um, that's why we got rid of all the bass frequencies uh, up to 200 Hz. Added a British clean, a stereo shaper to make it really wide and a sidechain. And then together they sound like this. In the drop, I consolidated um, the bass line. I turned off the sidechain and then I uh, reversed it. And now you will get something like this. And you can use that to make a cool um, synth fill in between different parts of your drop. So in this case, that sounds like this. For the reverse fill, I got rid of some of the high end, some more high end removal and a British clean. And then we also added a vintage verb uh, to add a little bit of reverb. The mix is just set to 18%. I made a volume automation. And then there is this noise, um, which is from Serum, just like the noise oscillator turned on with the LFO1 linked to the panning, which is playing in the background to, yeah, to make it a bit more interesting. And that's a really nice way to fill up empty uh, spaces and to really suck the listener into the bass once again. Then in the second part of the drop, I added a top arp, which sounds like this. It's a typical high-low ARP, and I think the reason that it sounds so typical is because this exceeds like a one octave range. So that will give you a really cool effect. And even you could like uh, make it more crazy like this. I actually did that um, before the drop, which sounds like this.
it sounds really cool and also mysterious if you use such a big range on your arps. Sound is from Serum, really simple. It's a saw wave with a plucky shaped envelope linked to the MGLO 18 filter. And there is some white noise on it as well. And then there is some reverb delay and an EQ to get rid of the low end. For the post-processing, there is an EQ, which makes a little duck into the bass and low mid area. Then there is a glue compressor um, to reduce some of the peaks that you also get um, when you like uh, open up the filter and change the sound, which I'll show you guys later on. And then there is this reverb, just a short reverb with not too much wet level to make it sound a little bit better. And of course, a sidechain. That's it for the synths in this track, let's move on to the drums. And I'm going to start with the kick, as after the bass, I think this is one of the most important elements of a track in this style. So let's listen to it first, um, playing it solo. The kick consists out of two layers, and one is a low layer, which is a really punchy techno kind of kick, and a top layer. And I will go over both of these layers. So the first one is a low layer from the pack. And I will now show you some of the mixing I did on it. So there's a transient processor to get rid of some of the attack. It just was a bit too punchy. You can always use a transient processor to either increase the attack or to lower the attack. Um, when you don't have the control anymore. So for example on a sample like this. And then I got rid of some of the high end as I want to do that in a separate layer uh, and that's this one which is really short and the low end is cut out so like this um, with a really steep cut and then there's a Valhalla room which adds just a tiny bit of decay um, and that sounds like this you really need a fat kick like this together with a Reese bass to really achieve that fat high low sound Let's move on to some of the percussion in the first part of the drop. Um, if you're a bit creative with different percussions and a tom, uh, you don't really need that much, but just adding a bunch of that stuff will already make a huge difference. And then in the transition part between the first and second part of the drop, uh, we just have a simple perk. And then these perks uh, repeat themselves in the second part of the drop. And in the second part of the drop, there are some cool loops from the pack coming in and a head. For the FX, it's not that special. Um, as you can see in the buildup, there is a fill, an uplifter, an ambience and a down filter. The ambience is also playing in the drop. Don't forget to add sidechain to it. And then there's an industrial ambience in the drop as well. And some uplifters um, to make the transitions a bit smoother. For the automations, we made a filter cut of automation on the bass and a band one automation, which is a high pass um, automation for the bass, which is slowly opening up towards the drop. Then there is a filter cut of automation for the plug. Um, which is also slowly um, opening up towards the drop and then getting back just before the drop hits. Uh, and we also added an endless smile to the plug to push it to the back. Then there's a sidechain automation uh, because we don't want the sidechain when the kick doesn't play. A volume automation of the plug. So it's actually not that hard uh, as long as you have a few really powerful sounds. Um, so the bass line and the kick. The rest isn't that complicated, but you really need those bad sounding sounds in order to make it sound right. So we'll now play the project once again, um, so you can listen and analyze what I just told you uh, in the project. <laughs>
that's it for this video i hope you guys liked it make sure to leave a like if you did if you want to check out all the sounds that i use in this project go over to the link in the description and you will find our new pack inferno uh, which contains all the essentials for your next techno track if you have any questions about this project or the pack make sure to leave a comment or send us a message on instagram if you want daily producer tips and tricks you should also go follow us on instagram as we post really valuable content on there as well for now i want to thank you guys for watching and i hope to see you guys in the next video